Hey everybody, Marcus back here with a Vaadin Tips video. Today, I wanna to show you how you can add real-time collaboration features to your web application. Now, a lot of the web applications out there are actually collaborative in the sense that you have multiple users in the system all working against the same set of data. But very few of them are real-time collaborative where you can actually work together in real time. And that can lead to all kinds of problems. So let me show you an example of an app that I've built that doesn't have real-time collaborative features and see what kind of problems that leads to. And then let's take a look at how we can improve the situation by adding some real-time collaboration uh, features to it. All right, so here I have a shopping list application and I have two users, Homer and Marge. So let me log in with Homer here, first of all. All right, and then as Homer, I'll just start adding some stuff to my shopping list here. So I'll add 12 Duff beers. So let's search for beer, there we go. Add maybe a two dozen donuts. Should take care of my snacking needs for a while. It's baked goods, all right. And so at this point, Marge comes along and she logs into the system, wants to check out the shopping list and maybe add some stuff there. So we'll log in and then Marge can start adding some stuff of her own here. So maybe she'll add six bananas, so that's some produce. And maybe she thinks that 24 donuts is a little bit excessive, so she'll scale that down to six and update. Maybe the amount of beer is too much, so she'll update that as well. But maybe Homer has the kind of opposite idea and, and he wants actually 24 beers, so he goes and updates his list. And now we're in a situation where Homer gets a save conflict because Marge had already gone and changed that uh, shopping list item. And now we're in a situation where we have two versions of the data. So neither shopping list is correct at this moment and we have a conflict. So this is clearly not a very ideal situation for us to be working together. So let's take a look at enabling some real-time collaboration features and how we can improve this workflow. All right, so now we're in the same app, but we have some added features here. So first of all, you can see we have some uh, icons up here, avatars showing who's logged into the system. We have Marge and Homer. And if I go in to one of these fields, you can see that on the other side here in Homer's window, he can see what Marge is updating. So uh, if Marge were to say, update the donuts back to 12 here and click update, that would now get reflected in Homer's list. She could also say like, how about some apples? And then Homer could be like, yeah, sure. And could go ahead and add, I don't know, eight apples. Mm, that's produce as well, like that. And you can see that gets added to both lists. All right, so this is clearly a much more preferable way of working together with people with the same data. So now not only do we see who are we working with right now, we can see what they're working on, what they're kind of changing as we change things. And we have a way of chatting with them right in the context of what we're doing. So now we have kind of all the tools that we need to actually work productively together, even though we're uh, in different places working online together. So let's revert to the original app and see how we can use Collaboration Engine to uh, make all of this happen. Okay, so first thing we need to ensure is that we have uh, Vaadin Collaboration Engine in our application. Now I'm on Vaadin version 21, which already includes Collaboration Engine. So if you're on Vaadin 20 or 14.7 or later, it's already included in Vaadin. If you're on an earlier version, you need to go and uh, enter your dependencies and add it. So just anywhere here in the dependencies, search for Collaboration engine like that and add that to your dependencies. Now in my case, like I said, I don't need that. So I'll leave that out. The second part I need to do is go into my application class and enable push. So just add a push annotation like this to enable that two-way communication between the server and the client. So that kind of takes care of the boilerplate. Now, the first thing we need to do when we're enabling real-time collaboration between people is that we need to know who's who. So we need to identify the user. 
Now in my application, I'm using Spring Security, so I can use the security context holder to get a hold of that user. And we're gonna use that to create a user info object that we can use then uh, within Collaboration Engine to uniquely identify a single user. So I'm in my shopping list view here, and what I'll do first is I'll use that security context holder, I'll get the context and get the authentication from there and get the name. In my application, I'm only using an in-memory authentication, so I don't have anything except from name to use, but in a real life application, you would probably get a uh, hold of a user object where you have an ID or something that's unique. But what I'll do is I'll just save this uh, name into a variable. And what I can do then is create a new user info object. And you can see this takes in two things. So it'll take in a user ID and a name, or alternatively, also a image URL if you have an avatar for them. But I'll just pass in the name twice here. So once for ID and once for the display name. And then I'll save this in a field so that I have access to it all over uh, the application. Now, the first thing I want to do is add those avatars up there in the header, just so we can see who's, who's currently on this view. All right, so for that, I'm going to go into the get header method. And, and just as a reminder, I will have all the code on GitHub. So check the description below for the link if you want to see the code and, and kind of follow along there. So what I want to do is create a new collaboration avatar group. And again, if we take a look at what this takes in, it takes in that user info that we just created. So we'll pass in the user info. And the second thing it takes in is a topic ID. So topic IDs, you can think of as kind of like chat rooms or kind of one topic that you're discussing around. So one set of shared data. So in this case, we want to have a topic that is essentially our, our view. We want to see who's, who is in our view right now. So let's just call this uh, avatars, for instance. And I'll save this into a variable again. And I will add this to my header like this. Okay, so we'll we'll save. And I'm, I'm running my app now with JRebel just so I have some pretty quick reloads. Uh, it doesn't look exactly the way I want, even though I've expanded the header here. And the reason is that the, the avatar group is 100% wide by default. So I'm gonna go in and unset the width just so everything looks a little bit nicer. So I'll go into my avatars here and get the style and then we'll set the width to unset. So just using CSS to unset the width. And hopefully now when we refresh, the avatars will be kind of pushed all the way here to the side. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is add that chat here on the side. So for that, I'm gonna go up here to my main content layout and I'm gonna create another helper here for get chat layout. I'm gonna use my ID to generate that. And what I'll use for the chat layout is a vertical layout. So create a new chat layout will be a new vertical layout. And then we'll return this like that. And what we need in the vertical layout is two components. We need a message list and a message input. And we need the collaborative versions of those that come with Collaboration Engine. So first of all, let's create a new collaboration message list. And if we take a look at what this needs, it needs the user info and it needs a topic. So the user info we have and the topic can be chat like this. And we'll call this message list. And the second part, like I said, is that uh, input. So we'll create a new collaboration message input and this only takes in the message list where it should add the input. Input like that. All right, so then let's add these to the chat layout. Add uh, message list, message input. And actually, um, I think I had in my original app, I had a H2 there for 
just for kind of letting people know what this is. So we'll create a new H2 for saying chat. And then we want to expand the message list to make sure that that takes up all the space that we have available. So we'll call chat layout expand with the message list. For that to work, we need to make sure that the chat layout has a full height. And we only want it to be as wide as it needs to be. So we don't want it to be kind of half the width of, of the the window that we have. So I'll unset the width of the vertical layout. So I'll call chat layout that set width with null like that. All right. So let's save that and go back. And we can see we have we have the uh, the chat here. One thing I forgot was to put the background color. So let's go back and, and take care of that last little thing. So there's chat layout that and class name, and I'm using the new uh, Lumo CSS framework here. So I'll use background contrast five like that. So 5% contrast. There we go. So now it kind of stands out a little bit. All right. So the next thing I want to do is take care of all these fields and make them collaborative. So for that, I'm going to go into the form component that I have. And as you can see here, I'm using the Vaadin binder to bind those fields to the underlying object. And what I need to do is change this binder to a collaborative binder. So let's go ahead and uh, use the collaboration binder here. And we need to go in and change the, the in initialization here to a collaboration binder as well. And you'll notice that it takes in a second parameter here. And if we take a look at what that is. Sorry about that. Uh, you can see it needs the user info here. So we'll pass in the user info. And to get hold of that, we'll actually pass it in here in the item form. So we'll take it in as a parameter like that. And let's go into the shopping list view here and fix that. So we have the new item form here that should pass in user info and then when we add an item, we also pass in the user info like this. All right. Then we need to go in and change how the item is set. So right now you can see the read bean is deprecated because we changed from the normal binder to the collaborative binder. The reason is that we don't want every person who loads up the application to override the shared state with whatever theirs is. So what we want is to have one shared state that everyone latches onto and only the first person who joins will kind of populate that state. We will also need another method where we can reset that state whenever we save. So for instance, everyone gets the latest version ID so that we don't get any save conflicts later on. So for this to work, uh, the first thing I need is an ID so that we can uniquely identify each item. And that's going to be important. So we have a separate topic for each item. So Let's call this ID. And the ID, we can use the items ID. So get the ID. It might be null if we're working with a new uh, new object. So let's check for null. And if it's null, we'll just say new as the ID. And otherwise, it'll be item.getID.toString like this. And then what we'll do is we'll call binder and we'll set the topic. And the topic ID will be item slash, and then I'll pass in that ID like this. And it takes in another uh, lambda here, which uh, produces uh, the initial value if there isn't already a shared value available. So in that case, we pass in the item. The topic here uh, is arbitrary, so any unique uh, string that you have for a, a given I, uh, item would work. I prefer the slash just kind of URL esque syntax that works. All right, so I'll uh, remove that. And like I said, we also need another function now for resetting the value. So in those cases where somebody has just saved that value, we actually do want to go and update the shared value for everyone. And for that, we can use the reset method on the collaboration binder. So let's create another 
public void reset and this will take in a shopping list item as well and like the set item it will save that so this dot item is equal to item and then it will call it binder dot reset with that item item like that so with that we can now go and update those couple of places where the item should actually get reset so for instance here when we save the item we want to call reset so that we get an actually new version of that object there likewise here um, when we update a form we'll call reset here okay so let's go into our app again and see what's happening wait for this to reload and hopefully if things went well now you'll see that when I click in here the other browser window here shows that I'm editing if I change something here you can see that the corresponding fields get updated there's still a problem though uh, you can see that when I add something here as Marge it does show up for me but it doesn't show up for Homer unless he goes in and refreshes and that's obviously not ideal so we're still kind of working on different sets of data just that if we happen to uh, work on some data that both of us have then we can see what uh, the other person is doing so as a last step let's move this list into a shared topic uh, that way we have a shared data structure containing all those shopping list items so whenever we add or delete an item it's going to show up instantaneously on every every window okay so for this we're going to use a more low level api in the in the collaboration engine so far we've used these kind of convenience apis like the message list and uh, the collaboration binder now we're going to actually use the topic api that allows us to just create a generic shared data structure that we can give a topic for and then we can kind of share that data structure between the different clients so what i'll do here instead of just adding all these items locally is i'll create a helper method set up collaboration engine and in here i'll create kind of a shared data structure for us to use between the different windows so for that we're going to use the topic api like i mentioned so i'll use the collaboration engine i'll get an instance of it and then i'll open a topic connection now let's take a look at what this takes in it takes in quite a bu bunch of things so one is the component that it should attach to that'll be this view so we'll pass in this second will be a topic id we'll call this list because it's going to be the list of things that we have then it takes in the user info that we have and then it will take in a connection activation callback so we'll just do a lambda here for topic if i can spell it like that and this needs to return any registrations that we have so it can clean up after itself in my case i don't have any so i'll just return null to make this happy all right so with this topic connection now open we can get hold of a shared data structure a map that we can use for uh sharing this state between uh between the clients so i'll create a items map or actually get hold of it through this topic connection and calling get name map and I'll name my map uh, just items now there are two things I want to do first of all I want to subscribe to this so whenever it changes I can somehow react to that so I'll have an event that comes in here and from there I can kind of see what's happening so let's do a little checking of what's happening so if the events old value and we here we need to tell what type of uh, class we're working with so in, in our case we're using the shopping list item so if that is equal to null this essentially means that we have a new item in that case we want to call add item and we want to get the value again 
telling this what type it is. So we're using the shopping list item class here. So that will take care of adding it to our UI locally. All right. So if it's not a U, uh, new item, let's take a look at it closer and understand if it's either an updated item or something that got removed. So first, uh, let's check if the value, again, shopping list item dot class, if it's equal to null. And in that case, we want to call delete item and again, get the value. So that in, in this case, we want to get the old value. So what was the item that got deleted? Shopping list item dot class like that. And in other cases, we have uh, updated an item. In that case, what we want to do is go ahead and update the form with the newest value. So let's get a hold of the updated object. And that one will be the value casted to a shopping list item like this. And then we'll use our local forms map to get uh, the right form, first of all. So we'll get the updated ID, which is the key. And then we'll call reset with this updated value like this. All right, so now that we have this uh, subscription here that updates our UI, depending on how things change in our shared data structure, uh, we need to populate it if we're the first people joining uh, this topic. So let's, we can check that by taking our items, getting the keys, and uh, looking the count there. So if the count is equal to zero, what we need to do then is go ahead and add all of those to our to our map. And so here I'll use the shopping service. I'll get the shopping list and just use a for each to go over the items. And what I want to do here then is take the shared map that I have and put in there each item. So the item has a ID that's an integer. So we're going to use to string because the uh, keys need to be strings uh, for the shared list. And then we put in the object itself, which is the item. And when we do this, the subscription will kick in. And when we add new items, they're going to get uh, added to the uh, to the UI. All right, so that sets up the plumbing for sharing uh, data between the different clients. Now we still need to go and change when we're saving and deleting things so that we're actually saving and deleting also to the shared state. So let's go into our save method here. And we already now have this uh, logic in, in that subscription. So we don't need that. And I can actually remove this as well. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll use the same, same code that we had earlier to create a topic connection. Then we need to return null here. Just copy this. I'll need that in the delete as well. Let's just put it there for now. All right, so for our save method here, what we want to do is we want to, again, get hold of that shared data structure. So, so the items will be topic dot get name map, and our map name is items like this and then we'll just put it there so items dot put and we use the item ID as a string actually that's updated dot get ID dot to string and then we put the updated object there since this is a put operation on a map it'll replace it or put a new, a new uh, object depending on what's appropriate and then we need essentially the same here. So we'll uh, use this. And instead of having the deleted here, we're going to use the item. And then we're going to set this to null to delete it, like so. So let's save. And hopefully, <laughs> things went well. It's a lot of code in one go. So let's see if we manage to actually get this working. All right. So far, so good. We can see all the all the stuff here, and let's go ahead and 
add some stuff here. Some baked stuff, call add. Now you can see it got added on both places. Let's update this to 12 stuff. Update, send a message, hello there, like that. And sure enough, it shows up here. All right, so there you have it. That was a little bit of code, but you can see that with not too much effort, we were able to vastly improve the user experience of this application. So in the past, we were kind of working in the dark. We had all kinds of kind of save conflicts because we didn't know that we were working on the same data. We couldn't see the live data as it was updating, so we didn't really have the same data, same information in front of us. So check out modern collaboration engine if you want to add real-time collaboration features to your application. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments below. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.